Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for Eric Berry. If I'm a little disoriented and uh, wander a little bit during my storytelling, I'm so hopped up on cold medicine right now. Um, not because I'm sick, but it's Friday night and we like to party that way, so. Uh, you guys, I like sex. A lot. And uh, I like to talk about sex a lot. And I do sex not as often as I talk about it, but enough that I have things that I never run out of talking points during conversation. Um, and so the other day I was talking with my friends about sex. And, uh, and I should say when I say friends, um, I might mean uh, women, well they are friends, they're friends, but they're also women I used to date, okay? Um, I have a tendency to stay friends with, with those women that I've dated and, and slept with. I mean, chances are if I've dated you, there's something that I like about you. Um, so, you know, they tend to stick around. Um, so I asked a question that I thought was, was fairly simple and straightforward. I asked them, how many people have you slept with? And I got a, you know, probably 15. Someone else said, I think 35-ish, but overwhelmingly the answer I got is I have no fucking clue. <laughs> so I wanna go back a little bit. Uh, when I was growing up, sex was very important to me and not because I was having so much of it, but quite the opposite. I was having no sex and any kind of sexual thought I tried to push out of my mind I'm sure this is a familiar story to many people in this room. I grew up a hardcore Christian. Um, I was told by my youth pastor that I was the future of the church. <laughs> Look at me now. <laughs> yes. Um, but, I, but I believed him. And uh, so I actually uh, would try to, to, to push even masturbation, sexual thoughts out of my head. Um, so much so to the point that I would ceremoniously take the old pairs of boxers that I was, was coming into, and when my parents would leave the house, I would run out to the backyard and put them in this like Costco-sized U-Ban coffee tin <laughs> and pour lighter fluid on them and light them on fire <laughs> because I figured if I didn't have an old pair of boxers to come into, I would stop masturbating. And by the way, if you thought like burnt hair smelled bad, like just, anyway, I would find new pairs of boxers. It didn't really work, but I did have an eight month stint where I didn't masturbate for eight straight months. Now as a 15 year old in high school, you have to understand that that's all. I was going from three times a day to nothing. And if you did the calculations, which of course I did, uh, and the average male ejaculate being somewhere in the range of five milliliters or a, basically a teaspoon. We'll call it three times a day, let's make it a tablespoon. Uh, over the course of eight months, this equated to roughly a gallon aquarium of semen that I had spared, the, or a milk jug, whichever you prefer. Um, but I successfully abstained for eight months. I was praying to Jesus and blah, blah, blah. Fast forward, uh, I eventually lost that battle with masturbation or won it, depending on how you want to look at it. Um, but uh, I, I didn't end up saving myself for marriage. It ended up just being uh, sober, sober, that's important. Sober first time uh, that I lost my virginity. But this was my senior year of college now. I was 20 years old and someone asked me a question. And it's a question that I had just asked my friends recently. They asked me when I was 20, they said, how many people have you had sex with? And I had to stop and I had to think. Okay, there was Kathy, there was Katie, uh, one sec, there was, there was Liz. And I, I literally started pulling my fingers out to count and pulling my fingers out was part of what got me into this mess in the first place. 
But eventually I came up with the number, and it was 10. But that was really troubling to me. Not the number 10, but the fact that I had to actually count and figure out how many people I had had sex with. I, I felt like that's something. It's an intimate part of my life, and I should intimately know those intimate details. So I decided that next time someone asked me, I wanted to be able to tell them. And I went and I wrote down all of the names of the girls that I had slept with. I was 20 at the time. I was 19 when I, when I lost my virginity, and I didn't start drinking until after then. So I noticed that I could actually remember every single person I'd ever kissed because there were no blacked out nights to contend with when it came to kind of building out my sexual CV here. And I found myself compiling this list. Kisses, intercourse, and many things in between those two. And I started to think to myself, geez, we have these categories of people and things and actions. I mean, it made the most sense to put this data into an Excel spreadsheet. <laughs> because I like to keep sex sexy, you know? Excel sexy. <laughs> Hell yeah. I also wanted to coin a new sex term called the spreadsheet, but uh, we'll get to that later. Um, so, so I found myself building out this spreadsheet, and I know really nothing about Excel. Like, honestly, my 87-year-old grandmother knows more about Excel, but that didn't seem like the right phone call to make at the time to figure that out. Uh, so I, I go and I, I compile the spreadsheet, and I could say with confidence how many people I'd slept with. It was 10 people. A month or so goes by, and I sleep with someone new. Well that changed the list. I should probably add that person to the list. So now I could say with confidence, how many people I've slept with? 11, 11 people. The first time a friend of mine found out about this spreadsheet, <laughs> they caught me so off guard with their question, just immediately fired back. Do you think you're a sex addict? I mean, no, I'm maybe a data addict. I don't know. I mean, is that, it, it never occurred to me that this would be something that would be uh, taken as offensive or vile or anything like that. Eventually, women that I would date would find out about the, the spreadsheet. And they would ask me, do you feel that that's crass at all? Do you feel that that's disrespectful to the women that you've slept with? And I said, no, do you? And they said, yeah, a little bit. But the truth is that I didn't find that disrespectful at all. In fact, I found it to be quite the opposite. Because I would ask them back, if you caught an STI, and I made sure to say STI so that they knew that I knew what I was talking about. <laughs> uh, would you know who you possibly caught that from? And they said, I possibly would. And I said, would you know who you would have to call to let other partners know who might be infected? Um, I'd have to think about it a little bit. And God forbid, I never wanted to be in that position where I had to think about it even a little bit. I wanted to know who those people were, who those partners were. And thankfully, that that red phone has never rung, but if it did, I would be able to say, you know, okay, I need to call these X number. <laughs> I mean, I could tell you, but uh, X number of people uh, to, to, to let them know. And that seemed like knowing my sexual history and the intimacy of my own life is one of the most respectful things that I could do, the knowledge that I could have with those that I was going to be intimate with. There are other reasons, though, that I keep this spreadsheet. People think of data and technology as, as very sterile and impersonal. But for me, these are intimate connections and memories that I have formed with these people. When I would ask these women if they had any photos of themselves with exes or people they've dated, 
all of them would say yes. And I would say, why do you need that photo? Well, it's a keepsake, it's a memory. It's a way to make me think and understand and, and keep track of, really, my own personal past. And for me, this spreadsheet became the same thing. I would ask them, do you feel like you have a best friend in the world? Most of them would say yes. And I'd say, can you tell me that friend's phone number? None of them knew. Can you tell me your five closest friends' birthdays? Not without Facebook. <laughs> we need the technology to keep track of these intimate, personal details. Well, that's different. But I don't know that it is. I remember when my very data-oriented friend happened to stumble across the spreadsheet. And he was able to uh, export all sorts of very, very interesting um, data points that not, he was more into this than I was, okay? <laughs> like, I'm just, I, I, all right, here's basically how it works. Like, let's, we'll just stop for a second. So it's, it's names, right, in the rows, more or less chronological. And then there's columns all the way from kissing. There's a new one I added, which is like threesomes, which is cool. Um, and then, and then in between is you know whatever intercourse, uh, and there's a tick mark for each one. So like analingus, for instance, can get two, because that's can go both ways. But hand job with a woman can only go one way, I think. Um, but so anyway, he graphed all of these data points, and there were pie charts and arrow and all sorts of colors going out, and he used this data in all sorts of ways that I never even knew was possible. And he's like, yeah, you know, September was a great month for analingus. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Becky seems awesome, dude. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, um, you know, it became very, it became very important for me because of going back to that, that, that Christian background and the importance that I placed on sex, I'm not at all Christian anymore. And I've had a fair amount of casual sex, but every single person that I've ever slept with or kissed, or frankly even had a conversation with at a bar, doesn't mean that I'm in love with all of them, but I have a certain amount of respect for them and I do have an intimacy with them and they are part of my past, you know? And I like to stay connected with those people. They're the same people that I asked that, that question to. How many people have you slept with? Those are people who are part of that spreadsheet. And I have nothing but respect for those people. Some of them are roommates now. Some of them are best friends on that spreadsheet. And you know, some of them are just a row during a blacked out drunken night that says Cynthia met at the page after slosh ball but they're still, nevertheless, part, part of my past. And I can own that and embrace that, just the same as I have most of their numbers in my phone book, <laughs> as I'm sure you guys have best friends in your phone books. And I guess I just want to, like, I've dated people since who have actually adopted this policy now of making lists, and they've been surprised. These are people who didn't have any real knowledge about their own, or they thought they had knowledge of their sexual history, but when it came time to actually compiling all of that together, they were really surprised at the, the data that they came up with. Some of the people who said, yeah, probably 15 people. <laughs> the, you know, I did a little more research, and actually, it's 50. <laughs> 50 people. There have been times where someone has said to me, you're number 50. And I'm like, that's awesome, that's great, you've slept with 50 people. And they're like, no, I've slept with 52, but you're number 50. <laughs> so sometimes, you know, it can be a little, bit, a little bit hard to hear that, but whatever, you know. The point is, is that I, I do believe that knowledge is empowering, and I do believe that technology, in many ways, can, can help inform that and our identity and who we are. And um, 
the 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 spreadsheet is something that I can own and uh, file, save as as needed. Thank you guys.